Uh, and but I think the mistake that it's making with that, it's the same mistake it's making here, uh, assuming that um, you know in the kind of relativistic scenario, because the astronauts' clocks have slowed, that um, they think astronaut will see the clock of the Earth moving faster. No, it, it doesn't um, work that way. Time dilation is symmetric. In fact, that's one of the um, the relativistic paradoxes. So let me transition to that and uh, ask perplexity, more relativity paradox questions. That's uh, what I was kind of looking forward to. Don't know if this will take a, a whole hour, but you know we'll do all the paradox scenarios that we have in this class, and there's a few that. Um, we can do so. I think for this relativity paradox scenarios, uh, I want to start out with what's in your textbook. So let's uh, go to your textbook and just uh, ask all the uh, relativity paradox scenarios that are in your textbook. So um, uh, let's do this. Uh, please give a resolution of this special relativity. Paradox. Uh, it might just give the basically the same thing that's in the textbook because it was in its training text. Um, so, okay, imagine that on a, and I'll just edit it. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll copy this thing. Imagine the astronaut moving at a such a speed that the gamma is there. And I don't think it, we need a reference to figure. A trip that takes 22 years in her frame would take 60 years in the earthbound strange frame. Suppose the astronaut travels one year to another system, explores the area, comes one year back. An astronaut who was 40 years old at the start would be 42, right? Everything on Earth, however, would have the age of 60 years. Uh, old. Uh, and then I think uh, you need uh, the second paragraph. Um, yeah, yeah, the situation would uh, seem different uh, to the astronaut. Uh, we don't need a reference to figure uh, because the motion is relative. The spaceship would be stationary or it is moving. Yeah, yeah. looking at the window, the spaceship, astronaut, Earth. Yeah, time. This is actually correct. Uh, correct. Uh, seen from spaceship the earth was only only age there whereas the yeah and and the there's a sense in which this uh, is not incorrect let's see um this uh, appears paradoxical because the two twins cannot both be correct uh would you resolve this paradox. Uh, let me actually put this down here. All right, let's see how it answers. It'll probably give a standard answer um, in the sense that, um, skip, um, in the sense that it'll say that the one of the twins undergoes acceleration, so the situation is asymmetric. That's the standard answer. Um, that standard answer doesn't fully explain, you know, so. Uh, going through these steps, you know, is it true that while the astronaut is moving away from Earth, that um, Earth clock is observed as running slower than the astronaut's clock? And then, so, yeah, let me read the perplexity's response and I will try those follow up questions. The scenario, yeah, twin paradox, okay. The resolution, yeah, yeah, not submit. That's the standard answer despite appearances. Um, which means, yeah, one of the, yeah, that's the standard answer again. Unfolds up our journey. Yeah, it seems Earth is moving slower, yeah. Okay, only through, okay, good. Fine, turnaround point. This also start and then she's, yeah, during this period of acceleration. Uh, now, you can actually do this without invoking general relativity. Um, this is the space time diagram and kind of, um, uh, yeah. I, I do think uh, you can fully explain this without invoking general relativity. In the simple time dilation formula, I mean, sure. Um, acceleration breaks the symmetry, okay. On the way back, again, running slow, however, because of the turnaround, it's not equivalent to the 
earthbound to ensure um, and the astronaut returns to Earth. The two frames are brought back together and the effect of the timeline can fall. Oh, here's non-symmetrical frames. Um, yeah, because the astronaut frame changes, excellent deceleration. So, so let me try asking this question. So, um, a terminal point, longer in, yeah. So it, here it doesn't quite fully say that the astronaut assists the earthbound twin aging faster. Um, but since uh, it is true that while the astronaut is traveling, um, moving away from the Earth, the Earth uh, bond, Earth twin is observed um, aging slower. And while the astronaut is moving towards uh, the Earth, the Earth twin is again observed aging slower. Can you explain when the Earth twin aged the most of those 60 years? Um, And if we attribute that to the period of acceleration, I think that's fine enough there. I'll ask a different paradox questions. Um, what is, is it, it's just repeating the answer it gave already. Yeah. Okay, okay, but it's changing this answer, you know. Astronaut will observe a large number of Earth years passing by in a short amount of time. And I wouldn't really attribute this to Doppler shift. Because when you attribute to Doppler shift, I think, uh, I don't think that's the strongest, clearest argument. Strongest, the clearest argument is one based on um, the, the space-time diagram and the shifting sense of simultaneity. Um, yeah, I think that's... Fine. Yeah, yeah, that's actually it. The shifting sense of simultaneity. There's a pretty good... Um, oh, I guess that's from Wikipedia. Uh, um, um, there's also a pretty good uh, uh, minute physics video on YouTube on that. Uh, so that figure we saw, yeah. yeah. That sh so in this moment, as the sense of simultaneity shifts from here to there, that can happen in like an infinitesimally small amount of time. And that's when um, Earth uh, twin age, ages rapidly. Yeah. All right, that's good. Uh, let's uh, find more paradoxes to ask and see how well perplexed it does. Length contraction, um, proper length. So there's something called a length contraction paradox uh, that could be mentioned here, might not be mentioned here. Um, Uh, maybe this is it. Oh wait, this is perpendicular. So yeah, perpendicular is fine. Um, mm. People traveling in. Okay, so the length contraction paradox, I don't think is in this section. Let's, if it doesn't come up later, I'll um, bring it in from elsewhere and ask. I want to see if in section 5.5, .5, there's uh, other examples of paradoxes. Um, yeah, this is a long section. Yeah, you, we already did the twin paradox. Um, well, yeah. Simultaneity. Yeah. yeah, this is like the clearest way you can illustrate a situation that's given. Um, this is why um, I think I say this in a lecture somewhere that um, the moment when I felt I actually understood the special relativity, including all these paradoxes, is when I learned to use a space-time diagram because space-time diagram helps um, kind of um, uh, highlight some of the implicit assumptions you may be making and it's uh, uh, less confusing than English words. It's visual. Oh, yes. Wow, wait, there are no more paradox question, uh, scenarios in the textbook? 
because uh, I don't think there's going to be any more. Um, there might be some paradoxical situations in the form of questions. So let me look at some conceptual questions, um, if there are any paradoxical situations here that we haven't already asked. Uh, yeah, we already asked that in conceptual questions. Yeah, wow, this textbook is not asking many paradox questions. So we'll, um, um, let me look at additional special relativity paradox examples. And let's see what examples there are. And then, ah, oh, there aren't that many. Have I not done, uh, I think I have already, yeah, they are in the main lecture. So let me ask those questions from the main lecture. So there's a Lorentz transformation, re-derivation, paradoxes, okay. So, um, twin paradox we already asked. So time dilation paradox, it's uh, described here. Um, and let me, so you know, if you want to watch me describe it, you can. Uh, let me borrow the language for that time dilation paradox from a note that I have written a while back. That's, uh, um, that's this one, uh, page eight, uh, on PDF page eight, okay, uh, page eight. So yeah, paradoxes, we already, oh, wait, we didn't do time dilation paradox, okay. So let's uh, start with that. Um, so uh, please uh, resolve this time dilation paradox. Um, and I think I need to describe, uh, if uh, Alice and, yeah, Bob has a each have clock, whose clock is running faster than the other. Um, yeah, I think I can copy it to the end. So, if, uh, yeah, clock, if you're Alice, then you observe the consistent with time dilation, but this is just symmetric, that's the paradox. <laughs> if you are Bob, then you are at rest, Alice is moving, so you so whose observation is right, Alice or Bob? And, you know, you have the answer key here. Um, perplexity doesn't, <laughs> we'll see. Um, the yeah, lies on the principles of relative. Okay, that's promising. Correct with that assumption that uh, relative, yeah, um, time dilation is a consequence of, yeah, uh, I already stated those. So, resolution of the paradox, they are both correct because of the relative simultaneity, which, yeah, because I, but so, so, you know, this is the correct principle to mention and apply, but I don't think a perplexity will apply. Uh, there's no absolute frame. Yeah, that, that's a kind of um, besides the point. Uh, yeah, that's a kind of standard answer, but I've always found it... Um, unsatisfactory. That's why in re explaining a lot of these situations, I imagine a magic telescope that can see what's uh, at some other faraway location simultaneously, because that kind of, that helps uh, cut away a lot of clutter that, um, that kind of, that leads to answers like this that I don't think uh, is really satisfying. Yeah. But we, like we specifically construct it so that we don't involve acceleration, like we don't want to involve acceleration. So. Uh, yeah, so I don't think uh, perplexity um, can answer this well. <laughs> the way I've answered it is um, when you draw it this way, you can see when Bob measures Alice's clock, we are comparing two different points, two different events compared to what Alice would be saying when Alice says Bob's clock is running slow. Because Alice is comparing this event to that event. But Bob is comparing this event to that event. So their um, assessment of whose clock is slower um, disagrees because their sense of simultaneity, for Bob it's along this line, for Alice it's along a horizontal line, their sense of simultaneity is uh, different. And that's what it should really explain um, beyond just uh, kind of 
um, saying that um, the the um, because of the relative to simultaneity. So let me ask this. Um, see if we can. Uh, if they can. It can actually expand. Uh, so let me just copy um, this. This does not. Could you expand on um, how does a relativity of a simultaneity explain this situation without involving acceleration? Um, explain this without paradoxes. Let's see if it'll actually expand on how one would use relative to simultaneity. Yeah, that I already know. Just, uh, two events, yeah. That coincides simultaneously in a frame, she concludes from bus when he. If bar two events on Alice's clock, that is. Uh, yeah, it's a little jumbled up. So, um, so the she wouldn't observe two events simultaneous. Like, like you can kind of read it here. It's internally uh, contradictory. If you are looking at start and stop of a time around Bob's clock, those two almost by definition cannot be simultaneous in anybody's frame. Those are two events that are time-like separated. The two events that are being considered are not the two events along Bob's clock. It's one event here and one event here. Those are the two events, events that are separated space-like. Um, yeah, so yeah, it, it's not um, actually resolving it correctly. Yeah. Uh, I am disappointed. I was hoping GPT-4 will have been better at modern, confusing modern physics and uh, it's not answering paradox questions well. Um, let's look at the other twin paradox. We've already done it. There's a length contraction paradox that, or a pole in the barn paradox. Um, um, so, yeah. so let me use the paradox. Now here's the paradox. Uh, Ah, that's long. Okay. Um, please explain this uh, poll in the barn paradox. Um, Alice is once again riding in the relativistic train. Paradox says that was. And I'll just type that out. Uh, let's see. Paradox. Uh, but claims he says was uh, L is equal to L P over gamma is equal to 10 meter divided by 5 or 3 is equal to 6 meters. Um, so he could have fit the train between the gates. Uh, he even took a photo of it. <laughs> um, because it's not a subjective thing, it's an objective, actual, real observation. Uh, okay, so I think that's the complete statement of, so you know, is Bob lying? Alice would say, yeah, Bob is lying. He never did what he's saying he did. Alice uh, says, made it worse, okay. Okay, so... Oh wait, there's a whole bunch of line breaks. I hate extra line breaks, so let me just get rid of them. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of line breaks there, but uh, let me just leave them <laughs> for the visual uh, presentation sake. Yeah, those are all the line breaks. It's a PDF. Um, yeah, Bob's perspective, yeah, that's what's described up there. Uh, Alice's perspective, yeah, already described up there. Um, resolution, disagree on because not because yeah, good. 
but because we should conclude, yeah, simultaneity of the gates closing. So it might actually be answering that correctly. Uh, let's see. Both but the gate can close simultaneously when the front, yeah, contact B, gates cannot close simultaneously. Um, eventually, are not, yeah, yeah. So the for Alice, what Alice observes is, as you know, explained here, is Alice sees the gate at the, um, gate at the front, uh, gate at the front, closing and opening quickly first, and then after the train has passed through, the gate at the back then closes and opens quickly. So at no time were both gates uh, closed simultaneously for Alice. And that's the difference in the sense of simultaneity. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So the resolving uh, the time dilation paradox is a little bit harder, I think. This one is uh, easier. Um, let's see, there were more paradoxes. So those are the classic ones. And in this additional special relativity paradox examples, um, I give a Shaw's paradox. Um, let's see. I wonder if uh, uh, abstract has enough of the paradox. Uh, oh, but actually, this is the entire article, <laughs> so that's fine. This one page is uh, it. so. Uh, so I think I'll have to just type it out. Um, yeah, so I'll just type it out. Uh, so uh, please uh, resolve this Charles uh, paradox. Um, so I think it starts from suppose that. Suppose that relative to an uh, inertial frame F, a rod of rest length 10 inches moves longitudinally with the velocity V along. And I think there's enough text description that I can do it. Uh, along the X axis. And then a flat table whose surface is parallel to the hex axis and uh, axis and is of a negligible thickness uh, moves with a velocity u along the no I think that's gx g axis in such a way that at the instant t is equal to zero in frame f the center C of the rod coincides with the center D of a 10 inch wide hole in the table top. Um, yeah. If V is such that the Lorentz contraction factor is 10, then in F the rod is only 1 inch long and so clearly passes through the 10 inch hole. Consider now the same motion viewed in an inertial frame F prime at rest relative to the rod uh, with X prime. Oh, that's the solution. <laughs> and G prime X is parallel to the uh, X and G axis axis uh, respectively um, the projection of the hole onto the G prime, uh, x prime axis will only will be only one inch across and at uh, uh, I guess and at first uh, sight it may be difficult to see how the table can be successful in passing around the 10 inch rod. So how does the um, Lorentz uh, contracted the table pass around the 10 inch rod? And like a, a snapshot from uh, this rest frame would actually look like that. So it passes through that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you can work this out by kind of writing down like location of the edges of the hole as a like function of time. And as the sense of simultaneity shifts, like the, the orientation of the table will shift. Uh, 
variation, relative motion and effects, uh, rather than a whole contraction framework. And this one, uh, more it's contracted, uh, this one is impossible, yeah. Wait, that's not the table's frame, that's the rod's frame. Um, frame uh, rod's frame, where I rod retains the table, however it's moving, under contraction, the hole is, the hole is not 10, it's uh, 1 inch wide. Uh, yeah, it, it didn't even understand the setup correctly. Um, I mean, it does rely on that. <laughs> I, you know, most of the paradoxes, I think, uh, you know, if we look to paradoxical and you're trying to explain it, if you make a guess, uh, it involves uh, some misunderstanding about relativity of simultaneity. It's probably right. Because um, it, there's a, just the places where it can subtly enter, uh, the assumption of absolute simultaneity can enter subtly in uh, some <laughs> portion of the description. Uh, really, the ways of create crafting relativistic paradoxes comes down to that, you know, somehow make, you, make an assumption of absolute simultaneity, but do it in a way people don't realize you did it. It's uh, well, this, yeah, when the, the moment which you wanna... Uh, you know, so it's just uh, recycling the answer from the Paul in the barn paradox, which um, I don't think is right. Um, The entire run does not have to be the cell. Um, I mean, so this part could fit into describing this, but it's uh, the wrong frame. Um, in frame F prime, so in F prime, the whole is contracted. Uh, it uh, misunderstood. Yeah, it, it didn't quite. There were parts that were good, but not. It just uh, got confused in the setup. Um, yeah. Um, all right, I'm disappointed. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I don't think this is. Uh, um, or it's the same uh, Paul in the barn paradox. Uh, and that could train or. Well, all right. I, I think that's uh, enough paradoxes. Um, or this article started with what Windler discusses when you know the long from the hotel approach not so fast. Always only. Oh, uh, I guess that is the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm um, not quite satisfied with how perplexity performs in describing. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, can you list uh, additional examples of a special relativity paradoxes? Um, let me see if there's any that I recognize. And um, if there are ones that I recognize, if it'll actually answer it correctly <laughs> when I ask it on, from its own list of re special relativity paradoxes. Uh, oh, there's the EPR paradox, uh, which is a little different. Um, you already earned fast the paradox. Okay, spinning disk and exam sequence radius. It's contracted. Oh, I don't think I'm fully familiar with this one. Bell spaceship paradox. And plan uh, simultaneously to do the another one, which always frame on that CD. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, bug rivet paradox. So I think uh, I need to state the Bell spaceship paradox. Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I think it's just pulling the word. So uh, let me try to spell out the uh, Bell spaceship paradox. Um, consider, um, so I could start out with uh, two spaceships at equal distance and then um, accelerating at the same time. Um, so consider two 
space uh, ships A and B separated by distance B e. at time equals zero. Both the space ships start to accelerate. Uh, start to um, uh, both the spaceships uh, consider to identical states, identical spaceships separate by distance. Both the spaceships uh, fire up their impulse engine and start to accelerate. Um, from the perspective of either of the astronauts in space, spaceship A or B, the two spaceships are not moving relative to each other. Is that right? Um, you know, I don't know if that's right. Let me see if a link will give a like original version of a Bell Spaceship Paradox. Because, uh, yeah. Because uh, I think I don't want to misstate it. Um, paradoxes can be quite <laughs> sensitive to how you um, state things. And I want to make sure. Physical connection, Bell Space products. Okay, two space arrests are common. Yeah, connected by a toss string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the string enforces something, I think. Time zero in the common inertial frame start to accelerate. The constant proper acceleration as measured by an onboard accelerometer. Does the spring break? If I does the distance between the Two spaceships increase. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. And the I think the classic answer is that yes, the string breaks, and um, so what it is is the way um, I was. Yeah. So, so uh, please uh, answer this question involving a scenario described as Bell space. Spaceship paradox. So, two spaceships with some common inertial toss string, both uh, accelerate with a measure by an accelerometer. Question Does the string break? Yeah. So, the answer I believe from having heard it before is yes, the string breaks, and the challenge is to now explain it. Yeah, it does. I remember the answer right. <laughs> now, how do you explain it? Because you know, wouldn't you see the like the length of contraction, right? Um, distance between the increases, as observed from the original inertial frame in which they were at rest before the acceleration began. How? Because because even the star accelerates at the same time with the same proper acceleration from their own perspective. It means that these accelerations are not simultaneous in the primary points. Yeah. Accelerate and gain velocity relative to the frame. The length of the string as measured in this frame does not undergo. Um, oh, I think this frame is um, the spaceship's reference frame. However, the distance between the spaceships as defined by their excellent process does not contract data because it is being defined. Um, observe on one of the spaceships, the distance to the other. Um, the other spaceship starts later and ends later. Um, I don't know, this is such a confusing description. Um, uh, is a direct consequence of proper distance between the spaceship increases in any frame in which 
momentarily at rest because the as, I mean, so it comes down to that, but it's, so again, this is why I prefer the space-time diagram so much more than these English descriptions. You know, you will read it and you'll confuse yourself. I'm confusing myself right now. <laughs> so let me uh, sketch out the space-time diagram so that I can stop confusing myself <laughs> about this scenario. So um, we are describing, so I think it, uh, let me start out with uh, this uh, space-time diagram. This is my x-axis. This is my time axis. And we are imagining two spaceships initially at rest. Here and here, some distance away. And uh, I can sketch a world line of each spaceship on its own. So this uh, starts to accelerate. And it uh, undergoes uh, uh, acceleration, something that looks like this. So if it had never started to accelerate, it would have been on this world line. This is the world line of a stationary spaceship. But as it accelerates, it kind of starts to gain velocity that corresponds to reciprocal of the slope here. Now, if we are saying the other spaceship accelerates um, basically the exact same way in, at the exact same time, then what we are saying is we can take this, copy it over here. This is what the um, uh, Earth, uh, the, the stationary observer would observe, these two timelines. And we ask the question, um, so we say that there was a string connecting these two. And ask what happens to this string. Then um, this is, I think, uh, how you would sketch it. So imagine some moment later in time that like some t is equal to t1 so when you look at this observer and the space the the space time axis for this observer in their own reference frame it looks like this the the time axis will always be tangent to the world line so it would look something like this this is the CT prime axis. And the x-axis kind of looks like this, reflected over a, a world line of light, which is at, you know, 45 degrees and all that stuff. So this reflected over that line would be your x-axis. Uh, and uh, this is also line of simultaneity because this is defined by basically ct prime being equal to zero. That's how you define an axis. So this is all the points that simultaneous with this event here. So what we are saying is then um, we are looking at from here to the other spaceship at the same time is over here. And um, so if you imagine looking at this setup from the um, someone who is in this reference frame, then the distance from the physical distance, like this here to this here, this distance here, let me call that, I don't know, L prime, and call this L, this is greater than L. And um, you would end up saying, yes, the string stretches or breaks. And the thing that would uh, potentially be confusing or paradoxical is, hey, isn't it supposed to have uh, length contracted, you know, if it's moving faster? Um, why is it, you know, length uh, lengthening instead of length contracting? And I think uh, there the resolution is that as it involves acceleration, um, I don't know, I think I might be confusing myself here. Um, I guess, um, so I think uh, if we are describing this situation so that these two spaceships are accelerating simultaneously in the identical way in this reference frame, then what you have to see is that in a, 
in the reference frame of let's say one of the spaceships. So you imagine here. So at this uh, moment in time, if uh, both the spaceships are accelerating according to the schedule that they have set, then they are both uh, supposed to be accelerating at you know something that matches this slope. But um, this observer, when he looks at the other spaceship at the same time, they will see that the other spaceship decided to accelerate faster earlier. So they are kind of cheating. The, the spaceship that's to, in the front, it's accelerating faster than, uh, they are not accelerating identically. When viewed from this reference frame, the, the spaceship that's uh, at the front, it's actually accelerating at a faster schedule than, um, than the other one should be. I think that's what, how it ends up being. Anyways, <laughs> so I think with the um, perplex, with the generative AI, AI, one of the limitations it'll be running into is that it's trying to describe this uh, very confusing situation in English language. And English language is really not the best tool for resolving any special relativity paradoxes. I recommend the drawing space-time diagram that if anything has a chance of explaining a situation perfectly, without any paradoxes. It's a visual representation using space-time diagram. All right, I think that's enough time on that. Um, and in terms of what I want to cover, I think uh, <laughs> I don't want to spend the whole hour on <laughs> special relativity paradoxes. And I think I did kind of uh, skim through the, uh, the lecture page to kind of see. So I did re-edit a lot of these videos from original to uh, mostly in an attempt to, to have the board more readable. So I think I'm going to leave them be, not going to re-record them, uh, even though the you know board quality isn't as good as it could be, but uh, it's better than where it was before I re-edited it, blew it up, increased the contrast, fixed the white balance. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it be.